Hi, my name is Daisha Amster, and today I'm going to be cooking Water Zoe Poulet. So to cut into this, we're going to take the root um, side up and this side down and go ahead and get rid of it. That way it's going to lay nice and flat. And once you get it flat, you're going to cut it in half. You want to use a very sharp knife. It helps out quite a bit. And you're going to score it. One, two, three. Scoring the onion across. And once you get it scored all the way across, you're going to go the other way with it. We're going to collect them so we keep everything nice and neat in separate little dishes. And we're going to use twice as much onion. And then we're going to take our carrots and go ahead and peel them off. And with these, we're going to take the top and the bottoms off and discard them. And then we don't want it to roll around because it could be kind of dangerous. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of it, make it a little bit smaller, more manageable pieces and lay those flat. And then I'm going to take it a step further and cut those. And most of your flavor, as you can tell, is going to come from your onions. So we're going to take the celery and we just cut those long ways and just cut right across. And so you can see that you have um, quite a bit more onions than you do carrots and celery. Now with this leek, um, you want to kind of treat it like a green onion a little bit. Um, you're going to use the white part um, and cut off the little hairy end. And again, you can use that for the stock. And we're going to cut this leaf off. Again, you can save that for your stockpile. And then we're going to take this guy and cut him in half. And when you do that, you can see all the little layers in there. Um, a lot of times you'll get sand trapped inside of it. So you can just take it and kind of separate it in the water. You can run cold water on it, whatever you want to do. But wash that sand out of there because you don't want that in your food. And then we're going to take it and we're going to do half moons with those. Now, classically, you're going to have your mirepoix together. We're adding leeks for more flavor in this dish. Um, Water Zoe is actually um, sort of like a pot pie. It's Flemish. So now we have the garlic, and we're just going to pop one of these bulbs off. And you're going to take very carefully um, the sharp side away from your body, and we're going to give it a little smash. It will easily take off the paper, and then we're going to take it and score it, just like we did with onion, both ways. Give it a nice little fine chop there. So we have all these little compartments. It's nice and neat. And now for the potato. And again, you don't want it rolling around. You have to be very careful. Um, a lot of times people are kind of scared to cut root vegetables because they're not quite sure how to do it without it um, rolling all over the place. But if you give it a nice little cut, you can lay it really flat and you don't have to worry about hurting yourself. And with a sharp knife, it helps quite a bit. But you're just going to do little cuts all the way across. And then you're going to take the bottom that way you have a nice edge. So the bottom is nice and flat. It's not going to roll around. You have your edge here that will help guide you which way to cut. Okay? So right there you could make little french fries if you wanted to. But um, we're going to go ahead and cut them into small dice. And then we're going to take all this stuff into the kitchen and cook it. So now we are getting ready to cook our mirepoix and we are going to take our onions and our carrots and celery. So like I had said before, um, equal parts carrot, celery to onion and then we are adding leeks to this mirepoix marriage. Um, we are going to take our saucepan and get it on the heat and we are going to add some plain olive oil. We don't want anything too flavorful for this particular dish. Okay, and in goes. We want to sweat these items. We're not trying to caramelize them. Caramelization is something that we want 
Um, if we're looking to get it brown and get some color and, and some deeper flavors, but since we're using cream in this, we are not going to um, get color on these veggies. We're just going to sweat them, which means that at this time, we're gonna go ahead and salt and pepper. I use kosher salt and cracked pepper that I crack um, freshly um, to use on a daily basis. So we wanna hear that nice sizzling sound, um, nothing too aggressive. And while we are waiting for that to cook, we're gonna talk a little bit about the pole part of this. So I'm gonna put on gloves here. We wanna be very careful not to cross contaminate. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on our veggies while we're talking about our chicken. So I just have some chicken breast here and I'm gonna cut them into strips. If you have anything not desirable, if there's something on your chicken that you don't want in your dish, then you're just gonna go ahead and cut it off. Um, you wanna make sure obviously not to waste some good meat, but you also wanna make sure that you don't have anything tough or anything unpleasant in your dish, okay? So once we get the sweating just a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken to that. And now I'm gonna re-season it just a little bit. And as it's sweating, so we have our laminated dough that we're gonna put on top of our water zoe. Um, typically it's something you're gonna buy and not make because laminated dough is um, quite a lengthy process to achieve. Similar to a croissant, you want it to get nice and puffy and there's tons of layers of uh, butter right in between it. So I'm gonna cut this into thirds and then I take it and I cut those pieces from corner to corner opposite so we get a little triangle effect. Okay, and once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and bake it on our baking sheet. And you wanna give it plenty of room from each other. And then you can always refreeze these, but you're gonna wanna be careful to lay it back the way that it was packaged in the first place. So in they go into a 400 degree oven or just according to the package. And we'll let those go ahead and cook. All right, let's take a look. And they're perfect. Golden brown and puffy, just right. So now we have some bubbles in our pan. That's a good thing, that's what we want. The potatoes are fork tender and we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of parsley. I'm just gonna shave these stems right off and get rid of those. And we're going to do just a rough chop. And scoop them up. And in they go. Now, if you can tell, these bubbles are getting a lot closer together. That's what we want. Um, if for some reason you were going to cook it so it's so dry, it's really no problem. Water Zoe is very forgiving in that way. You can go ahead and just add a little more cream. And if you were to add more cream, you would want to add a little bit more salt and pepper. And we're going to take it off the heat because that is absolutely perfect. And set it down right here. Spoon out. And it smells so good. We have some nice mixture of all the ingredients together. And we're gonna take our puff pastry out here. And they puffed up beautifully. And they're nice and golden brown. We're just gonna take one of those uh, maybe we'll take two and set them right on top and you have sort of like what we call here in the States a pot pie but it's not enclosed this is water Zoe Pole. Yeah. looks great so what's all in this Stacia um, it has carrots onions celery leeks potatoes, chicken, and then the puff pastry and heavy cream and garlic. Oh, it smells so good. Thank you. Mm. 
It's maybe one of my favorite things you've ever made. This is a really good dish to share with a friend.